Now let's look at another theorem here, the central angle theorem. The central angle theorem, what it does is the measure of the central angle is equal to twice the measure of the inscribed angle subtended by the same arc. If we look at our picture down here, we have an arc AB, and this arc is subtended by both the purple angle, the inscribed angle, and it's subtended by the, ins the insert central angle, the blue angle. Now, these should be over. Now, if that's true, then the central angle is twice the inscribed angle. And that is what's called the central angle theorem. So if we know one of the angles, we can determine what the other angle is. This has to be x. As long as they subtend the same arc or the same chord. Now that's going to come in handy quite a bit in questions like this. Because here we go. We have a circle like so. And we're told that angle Q AQB is 40 degrees. So let's fill that in. We know that this is 40 degrees. And let's look here. We have this chord AB, or I should say arc AB. Now, any inscribed angle that subtends that same arc is going to have the same measure as AQB. Well, what angle subtends? What inscribed angle subtends that same arc? A, P, B. So right away, we can jump to the conclusion that A, P, B is 40 degrees. Now, we also have a central angle subtending that same arc. And here's our central angle, A, O, B. And if AOB, the central angle, subtends the same arc as an inscribed angle, and we know from the central angle theorem that the central angle must be double the inscribed angle. So we know that AOB must be 80 degrees. This is 40, and this is 80. And that's just using those theorems to solve these circles. Again, fairly straightforward math, fairly simple. Now here's a corollary to the central angle theorem. You may not have heard the word corollary before, but this is just a special case of the central angle theorem. And the inscribed angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So what that means is if we have a semicircle, that means that we are inscribing a half of a circle which means the chord is the diameter. Now, here's where this corollary comes into play. And you can just remember this, or just remember the central angle theorem. This angle right here is a straight line. That's 180 degrees. Here's the chord. Sorry, here's the arc that's being subtended, the semicircle. Or we could also view it as this chord, AC, that's being subtended. And if the central angle is 180 degrees, then that tells us that the inscribed angle must be half of that, so it must be 90 degrees. And that's what we know here, that if AC is the diameter, then angle B is 90 degrees. Just an application of the central angle theorem, not a new theorem, but a corollary, a special case of it. So let's look at this last example. We want to find angle Z in this case. Now, what we cannot do is assume that angle Z is 29 degrees. It looks sort of like it in the picture, but we can never assume that from the picture. So all it is, we have to go in and fill in what we know. So again, let's go draw all over our picture. Information right away that we know. Well, if this central angle is 104, then we know the inscribed angle must be half of it. So it must be 
52 degrees. Okay, that's one thing that we know. Now, we also know we have an inscribed angle here, or sorry, an central angle, and the central angle forms an isosceles triangle, and if it's an isosceles triangle, and the angle at the top is 104 degrees, these two angles must be the same, and they all must add up to 180 degrees, so we go 180 minus 104, which is 76, cut that in half, and each of these angles down here must be 38 degrees. Now, looking at the big triangle that's formed inside this circle, we know that all of the angles on this big triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So, we can just start working our way around the triangle. 52 degrees plus 29 degrees plus 38 degrees plus 38 degrees plus angle Z all must equal 180 degrees. Now, if we add up all these values, we figure out here that 52 plus 29 is 81, plus 38 is 119, plus 38 is 157, so we have 157 degrees, plus angle Z equals 180 degrees, so we know that angle Z must equal 180 degrees minus 157 degrees, so angle Z equals 23 degrees. So it's close to 29, but definitely not the same. We cannot assume that from the picture.